Um, I would like to introduce uh, Terry from Actia Bank, which follows on rather nicely from Jamie talking around us all sharing our data, because the key word there is collaboration. So what Terry is going to talk about is collaboration between the banks and the fintechs. And if we really want to enable sector growth within the open banking market, we really do need more collaboration. Very key to open banking excellence, and I'm absolutely delighted to introduce you to Terry. I'll just give her a moment to sort out some IT issues and to hear what she has to say. So um, if you could uh, give her a warm welcome, that would be fantastic. Terry from Actia Bank, thank you very much. Okay, yes, everything's working, perfect. Sometimes they are not, so but it is good. Okay. Yeah, my name is Terhi Kivinen. I come from Finland. Uh, I work in Actia Bank, and uh, I'm here to talk about uh, collaboration between banks and third-party providers, how, how important it is and why and how we should collaborate. Um, my own role, well, I'll tell a bit about more, more about that in a few minutes, but my role is community manager, so uh, quite a lot of my presentation is from the community manager's point of view. And very nice to be here, actually. I, I was persuaded by one of the speakers in API Days Helsinki uh, in June to come and speak here, so this is a great opportunity, and nice to see all of you here. Okay, so here is uh, the agenda of my speech. Um, first, I will tell you a few things about me. Uh, then I'll give you uh, like foundation on why to collaborate. Then I will give examples how to collaborate in open banking context and era. And then I will present you challenges and do a short summary of this subject. Okay, first to say a few things about myself. Uh, well, my, I have actually two hats at the moment. I'm a product owner and community manager, so it depends on the meeting which hat I have on. Um, and I work at Actia Bank, uh, which is a Finnish bank. Uh, it offers solutions within banking, asset management, insurance and real estate. Actia Bank was established around 20 years ago and uh, it has currently 308,000 customers and 45 branch offices in Finland. And yeah, well, about myself, during the last five years I've had different titles. I've had service manager title, integrations lead, partner manager, uh, those were in the previous workplace where I worked before Actia. I came to Actia in May uh, and started as a community manager and then got my other hat as a product owner. But what's common for all these roles I've had during the last five years, uh, it's the collaboration between uh, third party providers and software house or, or in this case the bank. I previous workplace was in a financial management software house, so it was a bit different, but, but I saw the same, same challenges and same kind of ways to collaborate there, and I'm trying to also bring them to the banking, banking business now. Um, yeah, about my background also, I, I am a humanist. I, I have a Bachelor of Arts degree, actually, uh, and soon to be Master of Business Administration, so until I finish my thesis, that, that's my project also. Um, yeah, I uh, actually, I've also studied uh, computer science for a while, but I know how to code Hello World, so that's my, <laughs> that's my business. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm living in Espo, which is a city next to Helsinki, the capital city, so, so quite near that. Okay. Okay, then to the actual uh, subject I have today. Uh, first, I want to figure out why, 
why to collaborate uh, in the open banking business. Uh, for traditional financial institutions, uh, collaboration represents kind of a uh, mind uh, shift in mindset and strategy. Traditionally, it's been uh, well not so common common to banks and financial institutions to collaborate with with other partners. Uh, in the open banking era, I see that uh, banks can choose uh, whether to, they want to compete or they want to collaborate. And if they want really to stay relevant also in the future, uh, I think that they should uh, choose collaboration. But yeah, mm, if we think about why to collaborate, uh, it's very recommended to create first a specific strategy and vision for open banking in a bank. And this shows how, how it's done in Actia Bank, uh, how we see the vision, objectives and goals of, of our uh, open banking way, ways and uh, well, the road, road ahead. Um, the foundation of uh, open banking and collaboration should always be the, in the strategy. It gives a good foundation for, for the uh, road forward. And um, on top of the strategy, we can build uh, the goals and objectives, uh, which are here in Actia's case uh, divided into two. Uh, what are the objectives for the customers and what are they, those for the bank? And of course, the TPPs, the third party providers. Um, in Actia's case, um, a moment. Okay. Yeah, uh, for our customers, if we think about what open banking really means, uh, it means uh, better customer experience, uh, new tailored services, and better access to service. So we want to offer them value through these these things. Um, for us and the TPPs, it means new business, new customers, and understanding new methods. And through this, we aim to win and retain new and uh, existing customers together with the best fintech partners we, we can find. Okay. Now, as we have formulated the vision of open banking, then we can go to uh, think about what and how, how we should collaborate. There are several ways for that, but uh, we have to just choose the right ones for our needs and uh, see how, how, uh, what kind of assets we have and collaborate as best as we can. Uh, I will here give some examples of concrete actions what a bank can, bank can do, where I've also been myself in, in doing what I, what I myself, for example, can uh, like do as community manager and product owner in both of those roles. And I will also reflect from my own experiences from the past when I wasn't working in a bank, but I think that those, those things really can apply be applied to the banking, <coughs> banking environment. Okay, uh, this is a very basic uh, chart. If uh, we think about uh, basics of collaboration, what's, uh, what's the core of it? Uh, the, whether it is like uh, interpersonal com collaboration or between the companies. So I think, uh, well, the most important one uh, uh, is communication, what is like the essence and foundation for collaboration. Uh, because if there is no con com communication present, then it's, it can create distrust and, and it's impossible to create and talk about shared objectives without communication. So, and of course, the, well, trust is very important, especially uh, in the open banking sector and era, because um, we should be able to trust 
the third party providers, the partners we, we collaborate with uh, that everything is going well and, and customers' data is safe and the customers should be able to trust us and the third parties and, and the services related to that. Uh, it's totally a new, new technology which brings new digital threats and this means that there's involvement from security, legal side and compliance uh, in data sharing related aspects. Yeah, and of course in PSD2 uh, we cannot do anything uh, without the customer consent or permission to share the data. So trust is also important from, from that point of view. And finally, we need to have shared objectives to collaborate so that we really know why we are doing this. Okay, uh, on this slide I have collected uh, collaborations general well, well, guidelines which we are following in Actia currently um, and well if we want to go first to the do side uh, we have chosen to build one-on-one -on -one relationships with niche startups and fintech providers and we want to put focus on more matured companies of course, probably later on it will be like uh, startups can be, well, they can be thought about, but uh, usually, well, uh, with startups there can be challenges because they are having uh, resources and development time uh, tied to the, like, running the business and growing the business, so it can be difficult with them at first. And, uh, yeah. As, we, as there is also that we want to prioritize partnerships uh, which require less, less resources because we have limited resources and we want to make use of those as efficiently as we can. Uh, and here, of course, uh, customers are involved to the decision making on which partners we should use. We can do uh, like uh, customer questionnaires or or interview customers and really, really be close to them and listen to what they, what they would like to have and see us, us produce with our partners. And uh, we, of course, want to learn from others. It's good, good to benchmark and see what <coughs> others are doing on open banking era. Uh, and then on the don't side, uh, we have, well, at this point, at least, we have not decided to organize an accelerator program. I've seen that some, some banks have, have done this, but, uh, well, we are not such, such a big bank, so we would need for that a substantial resource commitment, and, and probably we can see if that works out later, but not at this point. And we, want, uh, we won't invest in startups. Uh, in the beginning because uh, we don't have the instruments, <coughs> knowledge and processes in place and we want to know what can we really offer to startups and we want to like follow up the uh, market and see, see how everything goes before we, we go to that part. And it's important to not to try to do all at once because then it's, uh, well, there's a big risk of, uh, well, that nothing gets really done and, and it's not like you don't have the resources and, and stuff like that. So, so you have to focus on one thing, one thing and try to like do pieces, pieces first. Okay, so then uh, some concrete actions we have actually been been doing uh, with fintech companies or third party providers of course one and the most important thing as i said there that communication is the key also so we have to maintain active communication with fintech companies and the communication should be proactive uh, we should uh, ask and tell so so we should give information and we can also ask 
for example, opinions on how should we go forward with the development, what, what do you think, and, and of course, listening to feedback also from uh, fintech companies and developers and uh, really, really like gathering information from them. It's very useful. Uh, then the developer community is well the essence in the essence of open banking uh, for the community you usually need the developer portal but that's that's kind of uh, not sufficient at the, at, as itself it also needs well like a community manager i really recommend that there's a person who looks after the community and uh, takes it forward and really really like takes care of, of it because uh, otherwise it can be left left alone and the community should be for both internal and external developers and uh, yeah there can be for example even a slack channel for for the developers from the partner companies where, where they can contact uh, internal developers and really really like get in touch with them and talk about things so they can reach the professionals uh, yeah well participating in relevant events is important for example next week will be quite uh, well busy we are attending a small delegation of, of our companies going to slush. I know I didn't I don't know if you probably know know what that is, but it's a, a startup uh, well meeting, uh, quite star, quite a big startup meeting organized in Helsinki. So we will meet fintechs there, have a kind of speed dating with them. Uh, then of course active attendance in organizations and communities is a good way to meet fintechs and uh, probably have like a good, uh, well, it's easier to approach them through that. For example, Actia uh, is joining Fintech Finland and there's also Helsinki Fintech Farm, which are kind of communities where, where we can share, share information and uh, thoughts on uh, with the fintechs. Uh, there's also like more relaxed atmosphere like I think it was on this Friday uh, Fintech Finland is organizing this kind of uh, pizza and beer for nerds so <laughs> there's there's like a good way to relax and have a beer and pizza with with developers and listen to API discussions and presentations also um, yeah, and of course, uh, later on, it's good to organize some kind of innovation competition or hackathon. Uh, it can be, of course, uh, organized by, uh, by the bank uh, or, or there are several uh, service providers. For example, Junction might be something you know already. Uh, it can be participated or then there are like more focused uh, hackathon providers who like uh, organize the event and it's like totally tailored for the bank so that you can have like a um, specific challenge for the developers and it's like targeted to like some specific a API endpoint. It might be probably better to uh, organize it like that rather than go to like some kind of bigger hackathon because then you can uh, you can formulate your own like thoughts and uh, give your own focus and uh, say that what you want to focus on with the hackathon because very often they they have like recruitment uh, as the main target and it's for example not not in our case probably the priority we want to achieve with the hackathon Okay, so in the ideal world, there wouldn't be problems or challenges, but unfortunately, there are, are some of those, and, and uh, next I will go to these, yeah. And also try to give some kind of recommendations how to probably uh, solve part of these challenges. Uh, if we think about uh, challenges in the open banking and collaboration area, uh, they can uh, challenges can arise from very different, different, uh, well, aspects. 
there are organizational culture related uh, challenges and of course uh, outer challenges which are like legislation related or, or that kind of uh, things and um, yeah well the first one here is organizational support and how to get everyone on board that's quite, quite important because uh, collaboration and open banking uh, business it requires uh, resources from very different parts of the organization for example I, I have worked with development, marketing, sales, and, and it's like uh, if, if you don't get the support from, for example, from the marketing team that they know what we are doing and what we want to achieve, uh, it's, it's very difficult to have, for example, just the developer newsletters sent because usually you well, need the same tools which our marketing team is using and, and that way it can be challenging. Uh, of course, limited resources, that's, that's always uh, something I've, I've seen, well, very, very big ch as a very big challenge because uh, there might be limited resources in the development team, uh, then the, it might ge get delays to the development and uh, there, there might be like uh, some partners might even say that we don't want to collaborate you, with you because you have delays in the development and you cannot uh, deliver what you have promised to deliver. And of course, uh, organizational silos uh, is, is a problem uh, if there are like nobody who, who really wants to see the whole picture and, and everybody's just doing their, their thing and not like looking at other other ways to do things and what are the other functions doing. A non-agile development, uh, for example, in Actia we are trying to tackle this challenge by implementing a scaled agile framework. It's a safe, safe model and we are now well going forward with the first PI, which means the program increment and, and we are like now uh, really practicing how to, how to work in safe organization. But I would recommend that, it's, it's very, very great framework. Uh, then if we think about uh, the challenges that arise outside the organization, there are uh, the FinTech spectrum uh, and the spectrum of FinTech field is really wide. So uh, it's a big question, how to know which ones we should concentrate on, uh, what kind of index we want to collaborate with. Uh, and the differentiation from the competitors, especially now if there's the PSD2 interfaces, everybody's having like the same, same interface and same APIs, how can we differentiate? It comes probably from the uh, uh, premium APIs, which are uh, more than, well, after PSD2 related and, and that's, that's one thing. And of course, safe uh, framework, that's, that's one thing uh, to boost the development cycle. Uh, that's one, one way to uh, differentiate from the competitors. Uh, yeah, then there's, of course, that uh, TPPs and banks might have different views on what can be possible and what is not. Uh, and there might be also different interpretations of the law, which makes, makes big challenges. Okay, well, I have reached the summary, so I want to uh, briefly summarize what I've been talking about, about today. Yeah, um, so it's the PSD2 has, has come and the regulation has forced, forced banks to open the access for the data. Uh, so I think that uh, this should be seen uh, as an opportunity instead of a threat. We are probably going towards that, but still, still it's a bit like, uh, well, some, somehow it's still seen like a threat that we, we have to collaborate and, and do things, things with and open, open up the interfaces. 
uh, yeah, well, uh, if we think about the innovation possibilities in the open banking context, uh, they are very limitless. There's like a whole lot of things you can really do, but uh, it's important to choose what to focus on and think about really, really that. Like, uh, for example, it can be possible to choose uh, like uh, four sectors of the fintech area and then decide that now we focus on these. Uh, and the customer should not be never, should not be ever forgotten. It's also in open banking, customer is the king, and the partnership decisions should be based on the end customer needs. But I remember from actually from yesterday's uh, Paul Paul Rowan uh, from Google Cloud or APG was talking about um, partnerships and. Uh, collaboration and he said one thing that came to my mind very uh, heavily that developer is also a customer so we have to remember that that here also yeah so I would say that collaboration is really the essence of open banking you've seen some examples how to collaborate and uh, without these kind of things we we cannot like uh, reach reach uh, well the customer get the customers the value and and get innovations and uh, stuff it's it's very difficult without collaboration but that's um, thank you, <laughs> yes, <very> thank you. <laughs> we've probably got um <laughs> just whilst we're uh, changing jockeys really uh, we've got a, a couple of minutes to take some questions from Terry, who has very generously shared her insight into collaboration, which, as we all know, is the cornerstone of open banking. So can I have a show of hands, please? There's a guy at the front. Can you? Uh, I probably can share my mic. <laughs> Hi, Terry. Uh, thanks for sharing. Um, I think you're in, this, in the toughest spot right now of uh, uh, where a bank can be uh, before having created a vision uh, towards the digital world. What's the toughest for you personally right now? And what do you think could um, uh, make, it, make the bank get to the next step uh, for uh, either making money or creating a vision out of uh, the possibilities made possible with APIs? Mm -hmm. uh, well, there's, I think that the biggest challenges are like uh, still with the legislation, actually in Finland. Uh, I see that there are different views on what, what should be done. It's, there's a huge debate on that still going on. So I think that there should be, well, some kind of consensus on what, what is like uh, needed. And I think that, um, yeah, well, I think that we have come quite long with the collaboration. We are bravely going on, but of course, the the business value, how how we see the business value of APIs and and uh, the like the things, it's like that should be brought up more because now now it seems that there are challenges with that also. So that. Thank you. Yeah. And I'll share my mic here as well. I don't know where the mic man has gone, actually. There you go. Hi, Terry. Thanks for your presentation. Yeah. I got a question about what is the definition of a startup, right? Because, um, <laughs> yeah, whether, you know, whether um, banks should interact with startups or not. I mean, I would definitely say they should. You know, mm. I mean, we were a startup when we started interacting with the banks. And, yeah. You know, I guess that was kind of important for us and maybe for open banking in, in general. Do you want to give your name? Oh, Simon Redfern, founder of the Open Bank Project and yeah. CEO of Tosobi. Uh, and I think someone yesterday was pointing out that startups should not really work with banks, you know, because it's, it's the other way around, you know. So I think that re relationship should be entered into kind of carefully in a way, right? Because if you're a startup, banks take, oh my God. God, they take so long. I mean, even now we're you know we're, we're not a startup anymore, but it, like banks can take years to sign contracts, and that can kill a startup, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's something to consider, you know, um, 
like from both perspectives, both sides, yeah. But what would your definition of a startup be as opposed to a fintech? That's my <laughs> question, really. And yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, I think that a startup is kind of uh, still in a phase of probably uh, raising well money, get, collecting investors, and uh, well trying to get fast growth and, and develop forward. But you're you're correct. It can be like considered also startups. So it can so. be a drain on the resource, can't it, Simon? It is a real <laughs> yeah. drain. You can have a fintech and you know, of, of 25 and half of those senior managers are just dedicated. You know, they're out of the business for months and months. And, and often getting nowhere. So maybe there's uh, some work to do on the collaboration within the value chain to, 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 to resolve that issue, I'd suggest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Terry has come all the way from Northern Europe to share her insight um, to London. So really, will you give her a, a, a big thank you, show your appreciation, thank you very much. Thank you.